Okay, you can start. Okay, hello everybody and uh, thanks for attending this talk. Today I'm going to speak about driver maintenance and uh, uh, well, this has a different method that we might want to use perhaps sometime in the future. Uh, well, my name is Martin Wilk. I work in Suzelast in the networking and storage department. So, um, yeah, let's start about uh, with some of the well-known facts about uh, SUSE Linux enterprise kernels. Um, we use uh, mainline kernel sources, which are stabilized over half a year or a year uh, inside SUSE Labs until we reach GA. And then we continue using these mainline sources uh, for at least one service pack, perhaps several ones. Uh, once we reach GA, uh, stability is most important. We try to fix bugs and security issues, and at the same time, we try to avoid regressions, and thus uh, we prefer small and to the point code changes over uh, like big imports of new code. Um, and that becomes even more strict once we reach uh, long-term service support phase. Um, and there we would only allow critical bug fixes and uh, strictly try to avoid regressions. So all in all, that means that we can uh, keep working with one given mainline base kernel for 10 years. Let's look at an example here. Um, uh, kernel 4.12 was released in uh, July 2017. Um, then two months later, uh, the stable kernel 4.12.14 was released. And um, about one year about uh, after the first release of 4.12, we released our first distribution based on that kernel, uh, C15. And we had other distributions also based on the same mainline kernel, the last one, which uh, was uh, C12 SP5 released in December 2019. That means about two and a half years after the initial release. And then if you if we look at end of life, uh, the last C15 service pack based on this kernel will live until January 2024. Um, and finally, uh, the last uh, kernel of C12 SP5 uh, is supposed to live until October 2027. And that means we have uh, an all in all, we have a lifetime of more than 10 years for the 4.12 kernel. Um, well, now, drivers. Um, well, customers usually don't just expect the kernel to be stable, but they also want support for their current hardware. And they want uh, recent driver bug fixes uh, from mainline. So, and that's, of course, kind of a challenge when the kernel is already uh, one year old when we reach GA and perhaps six or more years old when we reach end of life. And it's uh, very hard, if not impossible, to do uh, with just minimal bug fixes. Um, and that means that it's at least for important hardware, for enterprise deployments, uh, this leak kernel ships driver code from more recent kernel releases. Let's also look at this in more detail. I have uh, made uh, prepared a small table here for the QLogic flavor channel driver. Um, here you see there is three distributions. And in the first and the second column, you see the original kernel of that distribution, the mainline kernel base. And uh, in the second column, you see uh, a rough estimate uh, what kernel upstream version, the, the QLA2XXX driver um, of that distribution would correspond to at GA time. Uh, and in parentheses, you see the number of patches applied for that driver. And finally, the, the last column is the uh, current or latest uh, maintenance update for that uh, distribution, again, uh, with a rough estimate of what mainline kernel that would correspond to and uh, the number of patches. And you can see, for example, in uh, C12 SP3, we were about uh, seven minor releases ahead of uh, the uh, mainline base, uh, like about 140 patches, and in the final maintenance update, uh, we were 15 minor releases ahead with uh, roughly 400 patches. And uh, in 3.12 SP4, 
we have uh, an even bigger distance with almost 700 patches for that driver alone applied um, to the kernel. Okay, just a, a small impression here. Uh, this is a small statistic of how many patches in our kernel source repository touch uh, files in certain subdirectories of the kernel. And um, here uh, it's very obvious that uh, a large majority of the files touched, uh, of the patches touch files uh, under drivers. And actually most of them touch only files under drivers, but I'm uh, going to talk about that later some more. Now, okay, um, the point that I, uh, we have not only the option to deliver drivers via the kernel itself, we have something else which uh, is called kernel module packages and which has been around quite for quite some time, actually since uh, 3.9 already. Um, well, after the previous talk, I think everybody uh, knows Still, I want to repeat some facts about KMPs so that we are all on the same boat. Um, the basic main uh, mechanism behind it is uh, the kernel ABI check, which ensures compatibility between the driver and uh, the kernel, which might be uh, a maintenance update kernel. Um, and this check allows the KMP to be used uh, throughout a service pack lifetime normally. Then there is a SUSE Solid Driver program, which offers delivery channels for KMPs uh, for our partners. Uh, we ourselves at SUSE, we do not ship any KMPs for uh, with hardware drivers for SUSE Linux Enterprise currently. Uh, we do ship some KMPs for the uh, high, availability, high availability extension. Sorry, um, and we ship these uh, via our standard repositories, uh, but there is no uh, SUSE vendor channel on drivers.suse.com, for example. And we also have no uh, KMPs for any um, hardware things in, in our standard repositories. There are some for Leap and also for, for Tumbleweed, but, but not for Sleep. Okay, so this is uh, the idea of the talk. Um, just, um, yeah, instead of trying to backport everything uh, in the main line, in the kernel itself, uh, we could simply provide drivers in KMP format. And this talk is uh, about um, exploring this idea and uh, showing the uh, how it could be done and discussing the uh, benefits and the limitations of that method. Um, well, uh, the the idea didn't came up because I myself uh, thought I'm smarter than everybody else and want to want to uh, reinvent um, Susan's procedures. It was basically a um, uh, practical thing. Uh, last year, about one year ago, we had a lot of bad reports about uh, the QLA to XXX driver, and um, for the recent or up to date distributions. Um, we decided to just go with the latest mainline updates, pull them into our kernel as quickly as possible. Uh, but we also had lots of reports uh, for 3.12 SP3, which was in LTSS mode, and uh, it was kind of out of the question to add um, another set of like several hundred patches on top of this driver uh, for a distribution in LTSS phase. And that, war, that therefore the idea came up to package uh, newer drivers as KMPs and have the customers test and possibly work with these KMPs. Just uh, a small reminder of how, how driver code flow generally works. Uh, well, this is a model that, that uh, corresponds to my experience not every, probably doesn't apply to every driver, but um, for the QLA 2XXX driver, it, it describes uh, the reality quite well. So we have developers here at the hardware vendor who work with the community uh, and send patches 
to the maintainer, in this case, the SCSI maintainer, Martin K. Peterson. And um, after a while, um, these patches will flow to the mainline kernel repository from which SUSE will pull the patches in. Of course, SUSE people also work with the community uh, to um, add the drivers to the mainline or add patches to the driver in, in mainline. And uh, we integrate these uh, patches into C and uh, sooner or later ship them to the customer. And for many of these drivers, there are also other driver delivery channels. The IHV may uh, either provide some driver packages for uh, SLE directly to customers, or uh, they, they may uh, provide code to OEMs like HPE or whoever else who would, again, package this somehow and uh, provide it to customers. And uh, so um, one idea of this talk is to allow like a parallel um, distribution channel where we could deliver the drivers in, pack, in KMP format to the customer and not only in this fashion here. Okay, now uh, I'm going to present some details uh, about the technique. I've been experimenting with this uh, quite a bit uh, over the previous months and then still uh, still doing that. Um, and um, and I would like to present you how I think it can be done and uh, most efficiently. So um, there are basically five steps in, in the technique. The first one is uh, to filter the mainline repository. The second one uh, to do the actual backport. Um, the third one to continue the, the backport work from newer to older distributions. Then a rebase step, um, which I'll explain later. And finally, creating the uh, kernel module package. So let, let's start with the filtering. I mean, this is not an absolutely necessary step. I think the code can be collected in different ways, but it, uh, for me at least, it has turned out to be um, quite efficient and very nice to work with. Um, so the, the idea is to start with the mainline kernel repository and then just cut it down to those directory of directories or files uh, that uh, are related to the driver in question. For larger drivers, that will be a subdirectory of uh, the mainline kernel. Uh, for smaller ones, it might just be a few uh, files. Um, anyway, the the tool tools there are basically two tools that are able to do this. One is uh, the legacy tool, Git Filter Branch, and uh, then there's a newer tool called uh, Git Filter Repo which does the same thing. It's um, considered to be more stable and cleaner and um, less error prone. Uh, I have to say both tools have worked quite well for me. I've started with Git filter branch and uh, worked with that for several months without any issues. Uh, for this use case, um, I, I'm later I switched to Git filter repo. Uh, at, it's actually cleaner, but it's not uh, like, Git filter branch was totally unusable or anything. Um, while this filtering is done, um, we can modify the commit messages to add a trailer with uh, the original commit ID from mainline. That's very similar to the uh, git commit tag that we are using in kernel source.git. And the, the purpose is the same, to be able to find uh, upstream commits quickly. Um, I have created a small collection of tools and helpers uh, in the GitLab repository mentioned here. It is a, a thoroughly work in progress, but um, looking at this stuff might, might have some people to understand better what, what I was doing. Uh, the main tool is this uh, update driver report tool, which is basically a wrapper around either Git filter branch or Git filter repo. Uh, and we'll pull in, um, well, we'll create the stripped down repository and we'll allow to uh, pull in updates from upstream um, into existing stripped down repositories. 
Now, this is what it looks like after this procedure for the QLA 2xxx driver. Here we see the .git directory. So this is the main top directory. And it's simply just the, uh, the files from mainline that, that belong into the subdirectory driver slash SCSI slash QLA2XXX. It's nothing more. And um, all history touching files in this directory are preserved, including mergers, which is important. And everything else is dropped. Um, that means that um, the total number of objects in, in this repository after the procedure is like about uh, 5,000, I think, uh, which is, of course, uh, very small compared to the millions of, of objects in the kernel mainline tree. Um, usually, I also apply tags. For example, like the kernel version of 5.0, for example, I would apply that tag to the latest um, commit in, in this subdirectory, which is an ancestor of the mainline tag of the same name so that I can uh, find a certain code base co exactly corresponding to how that driver looked like in that specific kernel version. Um, here is uh, a look at the, uh, it's just a, a small excerpt of how a how, uh, master branch of, uh, would look like. You can see here, it is just um, the nonlinear history of the driver. Um, Strip down to just that subdirectory, and you can see tags here. This tag, for example, corresponds to the uh, code base in, in kernel 5.6. Below here, we have a, uh, an up, a bump of the module version of the driver, and we have uh, various. Here we have a code stream which came in from the IHV. Then we have here some merges. Uh, we have um, a fix from the community, and we have everything. Uh, it just it looks like uh, mainline exactly, just a little bit more simple. And here we have a sample commit, just a random one, uh, just demonstrating how the uh, commit ID here, of course, is different from the mainline commit. But we can use uh, git grep or git log minus minus grep uh, to quickly look up uh, mainline commits. Um, then, of course, um, it's possible to not only use uh, the uh, Linux Torvalds master repository, but also other ones. Here, in my case, I'm using uh, the repository of uh, Martin K. Peterson, uh, his SCSI queue. Uh, that, that branch is called a queue in my repository. And you can see here, again, uh, some sort of nonlinear history uh, connecting the current master uh, or uh, Linux tree with uh, Martin's tree here. And we can uh, use these uh, different branches, look at them, look at the differences and everything. OK, so now, up, up to now, we haven't uh, done anything useful for SLE. Uh, it's just a uh, manipulation of the repository. Uh, let's just quickly um, recapitulate why, why we need to backport it all. Uh, well, the the Kernel APIs for in-kernel calls are constantly evolving and changing over time. Uh, the keyword here is uh, stable API nonsense. So there is no stable API in mainline. And uh, if you look at mainline, of course, uh, the driver call code and the APIs evolve in parallel. On the other hand, the API of the sleek kernel is, well, more or less stable and uh, at least limited by the requirements of the kernel ABI. And uh, well, the API changes are the, basically the, the main, maybe the only reason for, for the need of um, backports. So what is it like? For example, changes of types. Some time in the past, it was we, um, lots of code moved from atomic T to a ref count T. The removal of functions, uh, change of functions parameters or, or return type. Uh, removal of change of data structures, or uh, also stuff like a new compiler features, for example, uh, attribute fall through. Um, and all these changes can cause uh, the driver not to compile anymore or to uh, um, exhibit any uh, other problems, errors uh, uh, for when we try to compile them or, or provide them 
for older distributions. So um, how is it done now in, in uh, the technique that I am proposing? So basically, uh, we would start with a mainline base of a given uh, SLE distribution. For example, for SLE 15 and SLE 2, it would be 5.3.18. We would set up an environment where we can uh, do a compile test, at least perhaps also a, a runtime test. And then we walk forward in mainline patch history until we meet some error. So walking forward can can mean uh, like one commit after the other, but it could also mean like pulling in a number of commits, um, like a bunch uh, at at one time. Um, anyway, sooner or later there will be an error, and then we have two options. Um, we can either uh, revert or the ch change completely, or try to fix it somehow. Uh, and when we do that, uh, this creates a new branch. Um, from that point on, we can still continue moving forward in the mainline history, but uh, then we will need to do merges, merge in the changes from mainline into the branch for our uh, distribution. And then we need to continue fixing errors as they occur. So here's an example how this is done. Um, you see here the, the left leftmost uh, column is uh, a branch in my repository which I called uh, C15SP2 master and it's uh, supposed to be the, the code which uh, compiles and runs under C15SP2. Um, it's not the newest, it's just an example, right? Um, and here we can see uh, the upstream history where well, this, uh, this patch was added, called, uh, uh, which was adding uh, something to the uh, uh, NDME operations template, and um, well, that was an addition that was not available in the API of uh, C15SB2, and therefore, um, once this uh, this commit here was merged into the uh, C15SB2 branch, uh, in order to be able to compile the code, I needed to revert. It, it simply did a git revert here. And uh, so, and then we can, after that, we have that branch really separate from, from the mainline branch. And then uh, we go forward, in this case, uh, to the uh, driver version 10.01.0.22 um, and merge that back into 3.15 SP2. And we go on like that. Um, well, yeah, I said it. Uh, we when when uh, backporting, there are basic the two basic options: uh, either to fix up or to revert a change. Um, fix up is usually only possible for small changes like missing defines, missing types, missing enum values, stuff like that. Um, in some cases, it's possible to uh, add uh, if there's a complete function or something bigger missing, sometimes it's possible to like copy that code or replicate that code inside the driver, but it's not, um, it's usually not, not very practicable. And uh, um, another way, uh, thing for fix up would be uh, if there's a use of ref count t, for example, you could replace that to an equivalent uh, use of, of the uh, corresponding atomic t type, stuff like that. Um, if nothing like this is possible, um, then uh, it's usually necessary to simply revert the change. Uh, like if kernel call functionality is, is missing and, and we aren't able to, to uh, replicate that functionality in the driver itself. Now, um, next step here is to add additional rep distributions. I've uh, talked about C15 SB2, which is fairly recent, you know uh, what to do if we have uh, an older distribution. Um, and the important thing to, to uh, realize here is that the older distribution, the bigger usually the API difference to the current mainline. And that does not only affect the base version, it also affects the um, history of our distribution releases and service packs over time. So uh, it, it's in general, it makes sense to walk back in time. The, the further in the past 
a given service pack GA is, um, the bigger the differences uh, between the API and mainline. So, for example, C15 FSP1 usually needs all the reverts and fix ups we made for C15 SP2 uh, plus some more which, which are needed for SP1. And then the same argument holds for C2, 12, SP4, sleep, uh, uh, versus C15, SP1, and so on. And it's, uh, all this can be done using merges. And uh, the, in the end, uh, we end up with something like, uh, that I called a, a merge cascade. So um, mainline is merged into 3.15 SP3, which is merged into 3.15 SP2, which is merged into 3.12 SP5, and so on and so on. And it has the advantage that merge conflicts usually have to be um, fixed only once. And this is how it looks like. So we have uh, the various branches. Uh, this one is the 3.15 branch in this case. Here we have uh, no, the C12 SP3 branch, sorry. Here we have the C15 branch, we have the C12 SP4 branch. And for example, here, um, here was, here C12 SP5 was merged into C15 SP1. And this was a, uh, a, a code corresponding to the rather recent 5.9, um, mainline code, and here we need in C15 SP1, we need some two more uh, fixes, which were not necessary in C12 SP5, although they are both based on uh, 4.12.14. Uh, this is simply because uh, um, some patches were added between C15 SP1 and C12 SP5. Um, that made these APIs available, they are missing in C15 SP1, so we need reverts here. But then we can go on further without any um, additional fix-ups uh, until we reach uh, C12 SP3. Of course, C12 SP3 has other things back, back down there uh, which needed to be changed uh, with respect to the, the uh, more recent distributions. So, if we have this, like uh, just one back here, uh, all these tips here represent code bases for all these different distributions, basically for with for the same driver code, just uh, mainline code uh, with patch, uh, just so much that it compiles and runs under the uh, respective distribution. So in principle, we could just tar up. This, uh, these tips and have um, driver code that we could compile uh, and provide to customers uh, for all these different distributions um, in, in KMP forward. Um, well, is, um, is that all we need to do? Um, well, almost, I would say it's not, not perfect because um, the package code would be just an opaque tarball something from mainline patched in some way, uh, not, not really uh, well understandable for users. So, um, and that's why the rebase step is usually necessary. So the, the, maybe not for just testing something quickly, but when, if we want to deliver something uh, reasonable to users, it needs to be uh, a well-defined uh, version somehow. And uh, well, the idea is here then to take one of these tip branches and rebase it onto a well-defined base version, which could be either a mainline kernel ver version, something like v5.5 or v5.9, or in the case of the QLogic driver, at least, it could also be uh, a commit which bumped uh, the module version uh, uh, macro. For example, QLA2XXX, 10.01.0022k. Um, that can only be done if, if the driver authors use a module version or use some sort of uh, versioning for that driver independent of the mainline kernel version. Um, the advantage of using this is that if, if there are directly shipped vendor or OEM packages, using this version allows at least some very rough uh, comparison um, of how this driver would, would uh, uh, compare to, to those 
versionings that that uh, the IHV is using. It's just so so. It's not not exact, of course. But uh, well, anyway, it, it either this or that allows us um, to specify a well-defined brace version, and then we have a, a list of patches. Um, like rebase works, we rebase onto that exact um, code base, and then we have a list of patches, basically just representing those uh, reverts and fix ups we made before. Of course, it, the rebase may cause conflicts, and it may cause such conflicts repeatedly, unfortunately. Um, I have made the experience that uh, the git re, -re, re tool is quite helpful there because um, the, the operations are pretty similar. So if I rebase uh, like uh, my, my tree or, uh, onto uh, the, the 10 or 1 or 22 driver today, and I may uh, have to rebase it to a newer upstream release in the future, um, the, the uh, conflicts that will arise will be very similar. And uh, Git VVV uh, is very helpful to uh, repeat the same conflict resolution again. And it's um, important here to set the um, Git VC dot VVV resolved uh, option to a rather high value so that um, these conflict resolutions are remembered over a long time. And this, this is a non-standard Git workflow. Uh, normally, uh, the uh, value is smaller. Okay, um, the end result uh, is a, a repository with uh, possibly a lot, lots of different branches. Um, I have provided a link here. Um, it is in a working state. It needs still uh, cleanup and better documentation. I also wanted to um, present more drivers than just, than just this one. Uh, I actually also applied the technique to other drivers, but there was unfortunately no time um, before this talk today uh, to really present a, a larger um, selection. Currently, it's just this driver, unfortunately. But and, uh, well, um, the tools are in a shape that it will probably be possible to add more uh, rather quickly in the future. Okay, finally, um, we, we now have this uh, version base plus patches format, and we can wrap them in a KMP spec file very easily. Uh, they, I also created a small script for generating that spec file uh, automatically from, from a few base uh, data, like driver name, driver version, and so on. Um, it can also be done manually. It's, it's really, once this format is there, it's really a piece of cake, actually. Um, when, when these pack packages are there, they can be built and distributed uh, using OBS. Uh, how this could be done is a different question. Uh, so that, that would be, of course, uh, a matter of uh, a discussion that, that would involve uh, lots of different parties in, inside SUSE. Anyway, here are the links again. This is uh, there's a, the uh, tool repository and GitLab. And then there is um, a, a sample project on IBS where I have um, uh, collected um, pieces that I built. Uh, currently, it's only QALA to XXX and only for a few distributions. I uh, yeah, it needs it needs some more work. Okay, now for the discussion. So um, I think with the current workflow we use in kernel source that get, uh, there are some issues and I want that I would like to point out. Um, so instead of reverting patches, um, if we encounter breakage in uh, kernel source that get, uh, the the uh, offending patches are usually simply skipped. So if that patch has a fixes tag, we have to list it in the blacklist.com file. But if it has no fixes tag, we usually just don't apply it. And uh, it's just missing. Uh, the reason for that is usually not documented. And um, if someone else reviews this, uh, the situation like a half a year later or something, uh, he doesn't know whether that patch was skipped because it couldn't be applied, or be maybe because it was simply forgotten. It could be both, actually. Uh, 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 on a similar um, line, 
button instead of fixing up uh, patches, uh, mainline patches that do not apply or have minor issues are usually just edited in place. And the, the reasons or the actual modifications are not always documented. And that um, um, finally, uh, the upstream history is, of course, nonlinear. And uh, converting that, uh, it is converted implicitly into a linear series in kernel source.git. That's a general issue, of course. Um, and uh, that's, that means that uh, non trivial mergers uh, can be quite easily missed. Um, so, uh, all in all, uh, if we look at code in kernel source that didn't compare it to mainline and see differences, it's often not that easy to figure out why these differences are there. We can grab through the various patches and so on, but, but it's kind of difficult to tell often. Now, uh, comparing these methods, the two methods a little more. Um, well, the, the general purpose is actually the same. We, we uh, tend, from some nonlinear Git history in mainline, we construct a base version plus patches. In kernel source.git, it's the base kernel plus uh, patches listed in series.conf. In the KMP method, it's uh, the base driver. In some version, we define plus patches listed in the spec file. Like I said, uh, conflicting patches are, uh, in kernel source.git are usually just skipped or edited in place, whereas uh, in the KMP method, they are reverted or uh, fixed up after the case. The workflow in kernel source.git is based on Quilt. It's normally run for every, every distribution branch separately, although certainly different developers have different habits there. Uh, I can't speak for everyone. Um, the mainline KMP workflow is heavily based on Git merge uh, with a rebase as final step. I would think uh, that uh, the kernel source of Git, in a way, rewards minimal patching um, because, uh, well, uh, every patch applied is some work for the developer, whereas um, in the method that I have been discussing here, uh, minimal deviation from mainline is actually rewarded because every deviation uh, needs to be, or every change from mainline is a separate patch that needs to be added. Um, here, uh, some more points to discuss. So, um, one major problem with the method I have to say is uh, as a bisection, it is usually uh, available in kernel source.git, whereas in this method I'm proposing uh, automatic bisection is essentially not possible because, uh, well, when I mer merge something which doesn't compile, I'll add a revert or a fix after the fact. So um, when the bisection ends up somewhere between, uh, somewhere in that non, not fixed up history, uh, compilation will fail. There are some ideas how to fix that, but uh, in general, it's, it's quite difficult. On the other hand, uh, the blaming differences uh, between different branches or between a branch and mainline is uh, quite difficult in kernel source to get and, and very easy with this method. Um, Adding major new features is, in my method, basically not possible because we cannot touch anything that's not in the driver itself. So if there's anything in the kernel itself or in the subsystem, like the network, networking subsystem, subsystem, driver core, SCSI core, whatever, we cannot um, add that. And whereas in kernel source circuit, it can be done unless the kernel ABI is broken. The workflows, well, uh, the quilt workflow is uh, very well established inside Zusa. Hard to beat in that regard. Uh, this workflow I'm proposing is very new, uh, although, but it's using familiar tools at least. Um, and maybe a small advantage of this method in LCSS mode, like the original origin of the idea, um, it can be done. Uh, well, it's possible to to provide lots of different KMPs, uh, ship them to customers, even even in LCSS mode. And finally, the, the feel of the whole thing, this one feels like an inbox driver, even if it's actually not, right? If, you're, uh, if we are uh, uh, 
honest um, and, and backported driver really belongs to some other kernel and not to the, the driver where we are shipping it in. But uh, still, uh, this feels like in-box, whereas this feels like uh, out-of-box. Now again, um, back to this picture I showed in the beginning. Um, yeah, it, it shows the number of patches uh, in 315 SP1 cur uh, current release, which touch uh, files in various directories. And it can be seen that, that the driver subdirectory uh, represents the, a large majority. Next one is include, which is interesting because uh, include, is of course, um, almost everything in include um, is related to the kernel API in some way. So uh, this is interesting to note that you have more than 5,000 patches in 3.15 SP1 touching include. Um, here then we have Arch, which in, again probably, uh, uh, thanks Michael, uh, includes also some Arch specific drivers and then other things. Having uh, a little more detailed view here, how do the driver subdirectories uh, compare to each other? So the most drivers are in a GPU, driver's GPU. Second is NET, third SCSI, then InfiniBand, and uh, all else. So I'm not sure about GPU. I, I, uh, I guess it will be hard to use uh, the method I'm proposing for GPU. I haven't tested it, but for SCSI it works well. I think for uh, I, I think it would work for every every SCSI driver we are shipping, and uh, for Net I don't I'm not sure either. But I believe it would be possible to use this method for for most drivers under Net. So um, what if we could? This is just uh, like. Crazy speculation, of course, but but uh, please allow me to do it for, for all of this one slide. Just in theory, we could uh, cut down the number of kernel patches down to just one third if we switch to shipping drivers in this method. That would um, also reduce the number, the size of the kernel package. It would probably reduce the number of uh, or the frequency of updates we would need to do to the for the kernel, and of course. Um, it would also reduce engineering and QA efforts because we could um, separate kernel core updates and driver updates. And we could, uh, uh, when we do a driver update, we don't have to repeat every test uh, we would we would do for the kernel core and and vice versa. I know uh, modularized kernel packages have been discussed heavily in the past and uh, usually without a, any. Um, Countable outcome, um, but I would like to remark and propose that uh, this mainline KMP technique could be a part of uh, such a concept if we were ever uh, trying to uh, put something like this in place. And this is something that could be done today. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, let's. The last slide. Uh, thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? We have well about one minute left. Yes. So um, I have argued about this concept for quite some time and still arguing against it, because the problem is that we are facing a, an uphill battle uh, battle with the IHVs. Who insisting on providing their own KMP for their customers. As you've already outlined in one of the previous slides, so it's basically that's the typical out-of-box driver which is being supplied by the by the vendors to the IHVs. And um, this always has caused, caused us lots and lots and lots of problems because we, we were never sure which driver this was, which version it was, and which features were in there, do they, do they work at all, have they even, even been tested. And having inbox driver gave us a nice advantage and nice leverage, saying, right, okay, yeah, sorry, mate, we have all the functionality inbox, so please use our inbox driver, just for us uh, to allow us to reproduce things. If we now switch to this model, this advantage will be gone, because it'll be a KMP, it will be distributed separately. 
from the kernel. And um, so in the end, um, the ultimate, um, well, not really goal, but the ultimate target of this approach would be to drop the drivers completely from the kernel package. Because if we do it via KMP, there wouldn't be any need to have it in kernel. Well, it could be done. It, uh, it could, uh, there are various options, of course. It could, yeah, it would be one one possibility, uh, but uh, not necessarily. I mean, we, we could also uh, develop the drivers in box until GA, for example, and then do only updates this way. Or, no, or we could no, use this. No, this, this, this can't work because we do provide updates for the kernel. We do provide maintenance updates, and the and customer customer do rely on the maintenance update. Telling the customer. Anas, I don't hear you anymore. Anas, are you there? So maybe before Hannes joins back, I, may I have a quick question? So yeah. I, what's unclear to me, so when you create uh, like a backport for say 3.15 SP1, and then you said you will basically merge it back to create a backport for say 3.15 SP0, yeah? So yeah. all the fix-ups and reverts you need to apply for this backport are applied as a part of the merge commit or like if you say merge, then basically you have only merge commit to do all the changes, yeah? And won't that be... Well, uh, um, for example, I have um, like uh, 315, uh, 312 SP3, which is a pretty old uh, base kernel, and it, it needs um, a lot of fixes before the other distributions even start uh, existing, right? And then um, I need some, some uh, fixes, for 3.15 as well. Or, and uh, when I merge these, um, well, yeah, I, uh, the, the fixes I have for 3.15 are very likely to be necessary in 3.12 SP3 as well. Uh, there are some cases where they are already applied because of the older history. But in, in general, um, by, by merging, I would actually pull in those fixes that I made in uh, C15 in the C12 SP3 uh, branch. But it can be, um, by, by looking at the uh, history, you can very easily see, so what are the fixes that we used in C15, and what are the additional fixes that we had to use in C12 SP3, and so on and so on. That's very, very easy to, to discern, and there are, uh, yeah. I understand, but for example, so you have this fix in SLE 15, yeah, and now to be able to pull this fix into SLE 12 SP3, you need to modify the fix, likely. Because, for example, we had ref counts T in SLE 15, and we now need to use atomic T in SLE 12 SP3. So, do you do this replacement as a part of a merge commit, or actually, how do you handle this? Yeah. I don't. I sorry. I didn't didn't fully okay. understand what you were saying. Maybe we should we should um, uh, discuss yeah. that uh, l later. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Uh, I guess we are running out of time. There was a uh, there, was, there was also a comment from Giovanni. Uh, Giovanni, would you want to uh, speak it yourself? Hello, um, Martin. Yes. Um, you mean when we update, like between uh, C15 SP1 and SP2, uh, we change the base kernel, right? Is that yes. what you mean? Yes. Um, well, in that case, we basically create a new branch. So uh, because uh, well, the, the, the new, I never merge from old to new. I only merge from new to old. So um, in this case uh, for SP2, I would um, create a new branch, um, and from that point on, I would try. So once that branch is created, I would 
merge from uh, SP2 to SP1. And uh, before SP2 just didn't exist, right? Does that make sense? Yes, yes, I understand. Thanks. Uh, uh, okay, I'm sorry we are already late and we have another talk in 10 minutes. So I suggest uh, if anyone wants to ask more questions or discuss uh, some specifics, I suggest to move to the general discussion room and uh, go on there. Of course. So of course. Th thanks again, Martin. And yeah, welcome, uh, welcome.